Hi students, Miss Gardner here, and today I'm gonna to take you through a lesson about chemical and physical change. So in the last class, we talked about chemical and physical properties and how we can use that to identify different materials. So today we're gonna to apply a similar concept, but to the idea of change. Chemistry is often considered the science of change. We're looking at reacting two materials together to make a new substance or changing something in form, maybe from a liquid to a gas. Make sure you have your notebook out and you're ready to write down some definitions and examples as I explain them in this video. A physical change is a change when the form of matter is altered, but one substance isn't transformed into another. So some examples of a physical change would be changes in appearance or size or shape. Physical changes are often reversible. So physical changes often are changes in shape or size. So for instance, Crushing a can, that's a physical change. Similarly, if I tear a sheet of paper, another physical change. I didn't change the substance itself, I just changed the size. This is still paper on either side of my tear. A common misconception that many students have is that the transition of water from a liquid to a gas is actually a chemical change, but it's not. It's a physical change, and let me show you why at a molecular level. So when water molecules are in the liquid state, they're pretty close to each other so that there can be some hydrogen bonds happening between the hydrogen atoms and the oxygen atoms. As we slowly add heat to the water, these molecules gain a little bit more kinetic energy and they move further and further apart. This is how water transitions to a gas state. I haven't broken any bonds or made any new molecules. I've only moved my molecules further apart from each other. So that's why melting, freezing, boiling, condensing, even sublimation, those are all physical changes. A chemical change is a change from a chemical reaction that actually involves the rearrangement of atoms in a molecule. Some examples of a chemical change would be burning, rusting, oxidizing, or even exploding. You can often identify a chemical change by these following indicators. The production of light, the production of heat, generation of gas, which might appear as bubbles in a solution, formation of a solid, which is called a precipitate, or sometimes even production of a new smell or a sound. All right, so let's look at a couple examples of chemical change. Now remember, some indicators of chemical change are production of heat and production of light. Those are two things that are characteristic of fire. So let's go ahead and light this Bunsen burner, which this in itself is a chemical change. So I have methane gas that's coming through the tube here. And when I light this, it's now reacting with the oxygen around it. It's giving off heat and it's giving off light. All right, so let's do another example of a chemical change. Here I have a small strip of magnesium metal. When I burn this in the Bunsen burner, it will react with oxygen around it and also produce light. Now, if we were doing this in class, I would tell you, make sure you don't look directly at this. But since you're seeing this through video, you can watch this all the way. And now you can see that my once shiny silvery magnesium is now kind of chalky and white. So that's another indicator of chemical change. There's a color change. So a chemical change, we often can know that that's happening because we see some kind of color change or generation of a gas. So here I'm gonna put some aluminum foil into copper chloride solution and we'll see what happens. So we can see a new color forming on top of our aluminum foil and its shiny texture is giving way to this kind of dull reddish texture. That's because a chemical reaction is occurring and my aluminum is reacting with copper chloride to make aluminum chloride and the red you're seeing there are copper deposits. So let's differentiate between a physical and a chemical change at the molecular level. So a physical change, remember, that doesn't involve any rearrangement of atoms. So here I have an example. I have hydrogen gas, H2, and oxygen gas, O2. If I wanted to separate these molecules, move all of my oxygen over here and my hydrogen over here, 
That would be a physical change. I didn't break any chemical bonds. I didn't rearrange my atoms at all. I just moved them around. So let's compare that to a chemical change. So a chemical change between these two molecules would be a reaction between hydrogen and oxygen to produce water. So to do that, I have to break the bonds between oxygen atoms and the bonds between the hydrogen atoms. So now I have a molecule of water. I had to break bonds and make new bonds to make this new substance. That's a chemical change. All right, students, so now you should be able to distinguish a physical and a chemical change. Remember, physical changes are often reversible and chemical changes often are not. So think to yourself, can I go backwards? Can I undo that? If not, it's probably a chemical change. All right, make sure to review your notes and complete the questions in the IP.